I'm Lieutenant Winter with Fire Station One. We are in downtown Colorado Springs at Colorado Square. It's a 14-story high-rise building. My partner and I are going to go over the functions that allow us to safely operate inside of an elevator once it's been cleared by command. First thing that I want to talk about is the tools that we're going to bring with us. Minimum tools that we need for these operations are one is our big beam or our box light. Two is a set of irons. Three is our APW or our pump can. In addition to that, we want to make sure that we're in full PPE, including SCBA. For this operation, we've already obtained our fire control key. These keys can be found in either the Knox box or in the fire command center. Um, we've got it in hand. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to come up to our phase one switch, which is going to recall all the elevators in this elevator bank to the ground floor. So now using phase one, we're putting our key inside the phase one switch and we're going to move it to the on position. Once it's in the on position, we're going to confirm that all the elevators in the bank are recalled to the lobby floor or the pre-designated floor. Once we've confirmed that all of the elevators in this bank have been recalled to the lobby or pre-designated floor, take our elevator control key and we're going to move inside the elevator. Before we move inside the elevator, my partner and I are going to use our big beam, our box light, and we're going to clear the hoistway. What we're looking for when we clear the hoistway is any signs of water, smoke, or fire. If we have water, smoke, or fire showing when we're clearing the hoistway, then we're not going to use um, any of the elevators in this bank. So right now I'm taking my box light, I'm shining it between the hoistway door and the car door, and I'm shining it up through the hoistway. At this point, I can see all the way to the top of the 14th floor, and I can see that there are no signs of water, smoke, or fire. Once we've moved inside the elevator, we're again going to take our elevator control key. We're going to put it inside of our phase two switch. The phase two switch is the elevator keyhole that is located inside the elevator. From there, we're going to move it to the on position, which is giving us control of this elevator car. Once we've gained control of this elevator car, the next thing we want to do is check a couple of our safety functions that are located inside the elevator. The first one we're going to look at is our firefighter cap. When we look at our firefighter cap, if the cap is either lit or flashing, then that's telling us that a smoke alarm has been activated in either the elevator machine room, the hoistway, or the lobby. If that's the case, we do not want to use this elevator. The next step that we're going to take is to test our call cancel button. If we try our call cancel button and it does not cancel the elevator, we also do not want to use this elevator. So for this function, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to push floor number three, make sure that three lights up. And from there, I'm going to take my call cancel button and push it and it should deselect that floor. So right now it is not deselecting that floor. I'm going to attempt to do it again. And again, it's not deselecting that floor. So right now this elevator is not safe to use. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this, move our phase two back to the off position. We're going to exit this elevator and we're going to move to another card um, that that call cancel function works in. Now that we're moving to another elevator in the same bank, we're going to confirm the same that the elevator hoistway is clear. So again, I'm going to take my box light, I'm going to move in between the hoistway door and the car door, and I'm going to shine it up between the two to make sure there is no signs of water smoke or fire on this side as well. It is clear, so we're going to go ahead and move back into our elevator and continue our operations. Once inside the elevator, again, I'm going to confirm with our firefighter cap that it is not lit or flashing, which it's not. I'm going to move back over to our call cancel. I'm going to select floor four, then I'm going to hit our call cancel button, and this time, as you can see, it deselected that floor. So those two functions are safe to use for our operations. The next step that we want to take is we want to test our peekaboo features. So when using the car in phase two, you have to press and hold the button. So I'm going to go ahead and close our doors by pressing and holding the door close button. Once that door is closed, I'm going to hold it for an additional couple seconds and I'm going to release that. Now testing our peekaboo function in this elevator, I'm going to go to our door open. I'm going to push the button. I'm going to leave it for a couple seconds and then I'm going to release it. Once I release it, that door should close automatically. So door open, push it and release. And it's reset that door, keeping us safe in case something happens while we're moving in between floors or exiting the elevator. Um, for this scenario, we're saying that we have a, an incident or a fire on the 14th floor. So by tactical operations uh, manual, uh, we should be exiting five floors below the fire floor. In addition to exiting five floors below, the other thing that we want to do is make sure that we clear every few floors on the way up. So now that we're on the lobby floor, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select 
the next available floor because we have two um, we're missing three and we have four so i'm going to select four we're going to go to four once we get up to four um, we're going to check for water smoke or fire again by opening the door we are at the fourth floor right now inside the car we have no signs of water smoke or fire if we did have signs of water smoke or fire at that point we would mask up and prepare ourselves to exit uh, potentially in a um, IDLH environment but now that we're on the floor and we have no signs of water smoke or fire I'm going to use our peekaboo function I'm going to have my partner um, ready with his pump can and his uh, and his tools so that when we open the doors using peekaboo we can make sure there is no um, smoke or fire outside the door so let's go ahead and open the doors I want you ready to look are you ready yep okay Good. we're gonna continue investigating on the way up we're on floor four um, we're gonna go up a few more floors to floor number seven I'm gonna push floor seven and we should automatically be moving inside the car Clear. If at all on the way up you feel the need for further investigation besides using the peekaboo function, you can go ahead and open the doors. We're going to hit the door open button. These doors are going to open all the way up. Once they're all the way open, we can release the button. They'll stay open. And from there, if we need to, we can exit the elevator to come out and be able to investigate further um, on any floor below the fire. From here, we're on floor seven. We're going to go to floor number nine because that is located five floors below our fire floor. I'm going to press floor nine and we'll travel up to the ninth floor. Again, I want to reiterate, as you're traveling through the uh, elevator hoistway, if at all you come across water smoke or fire inside the elevator or anywhere along the way, you want to stop what you're doing, uh, mask up, make sure you're in full PPE, prepared to exit the elevator in any type of toxic environment. Right now we've made it to the ninth floor. This is where, where we're going to be exiting from. At this point, I'm going to use peekaboo one more time. I've got my firefighter ready to uh, look and are you ready? Ready. Okay. Doors open. Clear. Okay. Now we know that it's all clear on the ninth floor. This is the one that we're going to be exiting at. When we exit this, we want to make sure that we take our firefighter elevator control key and we move it to the hold position, which is going to allow us to leave this elevator here on this floor. So I'm going to go ahead and open the doors back up. Now that we know it's clear on this floor, Hold it in place for a couple seconds, releasing the door open button. And I'm gonna move my elevator key from the on to the hold position, taking the key with me. This allows us to exit the elevator, allows us to leave and function with inside this building, keeping this elevator in place for um, our own egress or for our future needs. Now that we've finished our operations on the, uh, in the fire building, uh, we want to reverse our steps to go ahead and put this car back in service. We're still on the ninth floor. I'm going to take my elevator control key. I'm going to put it back in my phase two um, control switch. Once it's in there, I'm going to move it back from the hold position back to the on position. And again, this allows us phase two operations inside the elevator. Reversing the steps, we're going to go ahead and find our door close button. We're going to push and hold our door close button until the doors are completely closed. After they're completely closed, I'm gonna wait a second and I'm gonna release that button. Once the button is released, right now we wanna go back down to the lobby. So I'm gonna push our lobby, which is the first floor on this building. And this will allow the elevator to travel back down to the lobby. Once we've made our way back to the lobby, um, to put this back in normal operations, the next step we wanna take is to open up our elevator car door. We're gonna take our elevator control key. We're gonna move it from the on past the hold to the off position and removing our elevator control key. From here, we're gonna exit the elevator, move back to our phase one switch, which is located in the lobby. We're gonna take our elevator control key, placing it back in phase one. It is in the on position. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna move it past the off position to the bypass, or you might see hold position on there. And we're gonna Hold it in that position for three to five seconds. After three to five seconds, we're gonna turn the key back to the off position and remove our key. At this time, we have to confirm that all the elevators in that bank have been put back into normal operations by making sure that the doors are closed. A little follow-up 
closing this uh, scenario is I want to make sure that everybody understands that we've been using these elevators once they've been cleared and it's been authorized to do so by command. In addition to that, after we've been authorized to use them, we want to continually reevaluate our situation and if we see any safety um, problems while we're operating inside the elevators, we want to discontinue the use and notify that to command.